Hello and uh, welcome. In uh, today's video I'm going to show you some of the uh, new features of the newly released uh, Majestic uh, Dash 8 Q400, the Pro Edition. I think it was released, I think yesterday. So i uh, just going to show you what uh, new features or some of the uh, new features that they added with this uh, version. Now the first thing you uh, that happens after you install the aircraft is this window opens up the manuals and it's a good idea to read them because they added a few new ones. Um, they added an abnormal and emergency manual. You can see here. I'm not going into these on in details but you know you get some this, this is what engine air start um high oil pressure so on and so on um you get the manual for the heads up guidance system which is here which is uh, i think one of the uh, one of the features about 50% of persons are looking forward to and the other 50% are looking forward to the shared cockpit. You get a manual uh, on how to use that also. You can see here it shows you uh, the different states that the uh, the control panel for the shared cockpit is in. Uh, you get a, I think this is new, uh, minimum equipment list which is really handy when you have uh, failures it can show you what this does it shows you um, if you have a certain equipment that's or malfunction or a switch in the cockpit that's missing or a, li a light indicator that's uh, blown you can check the MEL and see if it's required for the flight and uh, it's you know it's to see if you can if you can dispatch So let's just show you an example here. Um, the battery degrees Celsius temperature indications, which I think you can find this on the electrical page. Um, I don't remember what the cat thing is, but I think the MEL will tell you what the different categories, uh, the different cats are, and, and what they mean. This column here, the INS, this stands for installed, so it shows you the number installed. You have three of these indications installed the number required for dispatch um, zero and it shows you the remarks or any exceptions any maintenance procedures um, operations procedures and any placarding that is might be necessary um, you get a failure and maintenance specification Oh, I think this is the uh, the file you use to edit the failure. Um, I think it's the what do you call it? The service-based failures. Um, if you own the PMDG aircraft, you'll know about service-based failures, and you know over time as the aircraft uh, ages and you use it more and more, the you know things will fail uh, they have included this in the pro version alright so that's it for the manual the next thing you get is the um, in the pro version is I think they call it the instructor panel which is what you use to to uh, simulate the failures so you get uh, three systems, you get an electrical system and you see here all the stuff that you can fail in the electrical system. Um, yeah, you get the, uh, the hydraulic system, all the failures that you can have in the hydraulic system and you can fail the heads up uh, guidance system, you can fail the CAT3 and the IMC arm. All right, and the next thing you get uh, the control panel here. You get a couple new tabs in the control panel. You get, if 
First up is the shared cockpit tab where you get the flying mode, flying mode with observer or observer mode. Um, and you get here instructions on how to get the shared cockpit to work. This option just uh, loads up the little 2D control panel for the shared cockpit when you start here, when you load up the sim. Flight config, everything here is normal. I think this might be new. Yeah, I think this is new. Pause on top of descent, and this pauses the sim when you, the aircraft is about one and a half minutes from the calculated top of descent. You also get here a cockpit state uh, selection. I think default is the state that the pilot edition comes in. You get a cold and dark, you get boarding, ready for taxi, ready for takeoff. Virtual cockpit model you can select it with the HUD or without the HUD. System page, I think everything is the same here. Flight controls, everything here is the same. Engine controls, everything there is the same. You get a sound uh, panel where you can select the different speakers that you want various sounds to come out of. And a good old uh, weight and balance um, configuration. Weight and balance page. So I'm going to load up the sim. I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to load up the sim and uh, uh, I'll see you in the aircraft. And I'll show you some of the, the new features that they included. Alright, uh, welcome back and you can see just as the aircraft loaded we have in the top uh, corner that's loading a script and that script is uh, you can hear stuff moving around, switches flicking, default failure is initiated. Yeah, what seems to happen here is they uh, included a script when you select the panel state that script automatically um, Bank angle. automatically um, sets the aircraft in in the correct state, all the switches and everything in the correct state. Okay, so to start out, um, everything's the same, right, basically. Except you get a, a few new stuff. I guess I'll start from the left side here. One of the new things they added was the the circuit breakers. Um, they simulated it, all of the circuit breakers. So when you click on a circuit breaker here, it brings up a 2D pop-up. Um, for some reason, the shared copy control just popped up with it. But yeah, so this is a shared copy control. So you turn that on, you get that blue line to tell you that it's on, and you select the various modes here so you have the master when you have master on that means that you have control of flight and engine if you turn off flight then you only have control of the engine uh, you can have control of the flight and the other guy controls the engine um, and uh, you have uh, you'd be pilot monitoring in this configuration so you don't have control of anything except for the condition levers and the flap levers. I can close that. So yeah, so this is the uh, circuit breaker panel that comes up in a 2D. Um, I don't know why they did it like this, but I don't really have a problem because the circuit breaker panel isn't really something you'll be messing with. If you click on a circuit breaker, you can see it pop out. Uh, you can click at it back in you see the little white um, sleeve that tells you that the circuit breaker is popped but the reason why I don't mind it this way is because again you're not really reaching back here to pull circuit breakers on purpose just like that it has to be something really unusual for you to actually pull a circuit breaker but if a circuit breaker has popped then you know when you're doing your scans you come here and say oh here it is, it's popped, and you can just, and it resets it. So it doesn't bring up the 2D panel to reset the circuit breaker, but if you want to pull it, it brings up the 2D panel. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, 
that's that's that. They let me just turn on the FMSs here. So yeah, don't mind me. This uh, I'm here on the runway at Montreal. Um, this is just I'm just I'm not really doing anything serious. I'm just showing you all the new stuff. So I'm not sure, but it kind of looks like they changed the the color of the FMS text. I'm not sure if this was before the pro version or since the pro version, but it looks a bit it looks a bit different to me. Um, yeah, so if you go into data, you get a new option here, TCAS filter, and this is where you enter when you're in the multi crew. Uh, sorry, the shared cockpit. You enter the call sign of of all the. Um, of the the clients so for example you're doing a, a flight you enter the flight number of whatever flight you're doing if you're doing the flight online and what this does is filter out all up to three aircraft with the with that same call sign so you won't get a constant um, TCAS alerts while you're multi crewing um, if you go to services you see here you get the option to install or remove the gear pins and when the gear pins are removed I think they are stored I think are these the gear pins let me see yeah those are the gear pins the uh, so they're stored in this little in this little my mouse is having some problems showing up but Um, this is where the gear pins are stored. So, are stored. So you click that, the gear pins are in there. The bag, you click it, installs. And it's very important to remove the gear pins before flight because if you take off, you won't be able to retract the gear. Um, cabin this. Well, that's just the boarding thing. Boarding announcements. Um, what else is new? Yes, you get this uh, this control panel for the HGS, and here you can select the modes. You can toggle and the standby here. So you pre-select a mode on the standby, and then use the mode to switch between the the standby and the the mode that you want to use. This here is where you set the runway length and the so you set the runway length here. 10,000 and you should be able to set yeah you set the elevation here also and enter you can set the glide path angle and all that information will be shown on the uh, the heads up display the heads up guidance system I want to show you everything else before I get to the HGS um, am I missing anything alright let's just get to the HGS so you, uh, you click that to bring it down and here it is. You have a control here to adjust the brightness of it. You can get it really really dim or off. And uh, you can get it all the way up. I don't think they simulated the auto mode of it which is supposed to adjust the brightness automatically based on the ambient lighting. Um, if you click the clear button here that also blanks the HGS. These brightness controls uh, control the brightness of the HGS uh, control panel. Also with the uh, HGS you get the HGS I think it's a annunciator panel that shows you uh, I think it shows you mostly failures. The manual will tell you all the stuff that it shows you, but it shows the it's like status. It shows you all the status stuff. There's ET running. 
Um, let me see if there's anything else I missed. What else is new in here is that you get... Active Sky Weather. Why do I have two virtual carpet views? You can, uh, if you have Active Sky, the weather radar now uses Active Sky for weather. So if I... Um, let me just show you how this works here. Turn off all this stuff. And set that to nav. And if I turn this on... And there you have it. Um, if you see WX dot on, that means that the weather radar is using Active Sky Next uh, information for weather. If the uh, the dot isn't there, then it's using uh, whatever it used to use before. I think just the sim, the simulation stuff. I think right now this is showing me ground returns. So if I tilt the antenna up. Tilt it all the way up to 15 degrees and see what happens. Okay, it does take some time to update, but yeah, it seems to work. It has no auto tilt function, as you might be familiar with in the PMDG uh, version, but you know, you get this so it works. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I guess I'm gonna show you how this HGS here works. Um, let me just do a quick and dirty start up here. Let's close those things. Actually, let me close the doors. See if that will close them. Yep, that closes all the doors. Good. This is just something I'm, I'm just gonna just show you a couple of stuff of the HGS. Uh, so I'm not gonna set any speeds. I'm not gonna set up the FMS or anything. I am gonna set my nav sources. Yep, those are set. Don't, do I need the nose with staring? Yes. Um. Now before, let me see if there's anything else I missed here. Because it doesn't look like I showed you much, but there's quite a bit of stuff that's included here. Right, so you get an alternate gear extension. I'll probably show you in flight that, how that works, but you click this handle here and it goes down into this thing here and you supposed to rock it and it drops the gear. Um, you get 2D panels, so you press shift, yeah, you get a bunch of 2D panels here. As you can see, that looks like a, oh, that's this panel down here. The right side is uh, an annunciator panel and the circuit breaker, or some of the circuit breaker. 
if you want to access the uh, the shared cockpit panel you have to hit tab go into views instrument panel and you can see it right here um you get EFMS now has uh, an ETP or PNR functionality and what that is ETP stands for equitime point and PNR stands for point of no return so you set a flight plan in here and you set it up I don't know how how to do that I need to check the manuals or I could probably figure it out but I'm not gonna try to figure that figure that out in this video but what that is supposed to do is calculate a point along the route that is uh, of equal distance between the departure and the destination and once you hit that point you either if you if you have a problem um, and you have to land before that point then you can return to your departure it'd be quicker to return to your departure if you pass that point then it would be quicker to continue to the destination um, you get an autopilot TCS mode which is trim control steering mode which how do you use that now is it on the yoke Yeah, so you get a um, you can have the autopilot in like a pitch hold mode, and you can steer the aircraft using some switches here. I'm wondering if it's if you use these. No, that's just the aileron trim. But yeah, I'll leave it up to you guys to discover uh, and to find all this stuff. Because I cannot find it. That's how unprepared I am for this video. Or maybe... Maybe you control it with the yoke. Huh? We'll see. I'm going to take off. Because I want to show you some stuff on the uh, HGS. Um, sound system advanced mode... Four times smoother controls, head, head up guidance system, complete the customizable fare system. We took a look at that. Shared cockpit, we took a look at that. And uh, yeah, you get uh, Active Sky Next weather radar integration, service based failures, system panel functions. Um, oh, TCS actually stands for touch control steering. so it looks like you have the autopilot uh, engaged in a basic mode is what they're telling me like a pitch hold mode and you can use the control column too it's like a control wheel steering in the uh, like in the in the 737 um, panel state options flight control optimization work because yeah so uh, that is it I'm sure they had some bug fixes in here also but they didn't list those so I'm gonna get a uh, starter up, do a takeoff, and um, yeah, why not? Let me just make sure it has been a while since I've flown this aircraft. Make sure that everything here is set correctly. Not using the APU to start, using the ground power. Alright, I think we can go ahead and start. Let's start the right engine. Mm, I want this move.
There goes that runaway uh, control again. happening here. I think it's a recording mode that I'm using in Bandicam that's causing this. That's weird. That's, I don't think that's a bug of the aircraft. That's just the uh, mode that I'm using to record uh, the video in from Bandicam. I think that's caused the problem because I think you can see there the mouse indicator is flickering. That doesn't normally happen. Alright, we can go ahead and disconnect the ground power now. Taking away that. Now that I got the volume down a bit, so hopefully you can hear me now. Um, I'm just gonna continue with the post startup stuff. Yeah, that's a parking brake, so that's fine. Okay. Now the HGS has a takeoff uh, mode that you can use, that you use in low visibility for guidance. It um, guides you towards the, on the runway center line. Um, and what it does is, yeah, it guides you, it provides like a, a flight director type instruction to orient you to the runway center line. So to get that working, you have to set the uh, ILS frequencies on both nav radios. So for zero 06 left here at Montreal, it's 109.3. And on the other side, you set that on both uh, nav radios. You make sure that the right side nav source is set to nav 2, the left side nav source is set to nav 1. The course has to be the uh, course on the ILS, so 057. And you set the right course to 057 also. Alright, and uh, as you can see here, you get this. Uh, indicator here that shows you, I think it's a course deviation indicator, that shows you that we're right on the center line and uh, this arrow here shows you uh, the course that we set, so if we move that, you can see that move to the side there. Um, what else is required? Oh, you need to put in the runway length also. So the uh, elevation is 118 no sorry the length just looking at my charts here 
The runway length for 06 left is 11,000. And the elevation is 1. here the mode change from primary to takeoff and you get some new stuff here um, one thing you get new is you get this thing here runway indication and 11,000 what that tells you is this shows you the estimated runway length remaining which is really useful if you're in a, a low visibility um, takeoff situation you can tell how much runway you're using this carrot here uh, I think this is mostly useful on landing but what this carrot does is it shows you the your rate of deceleration so it kind of tells you just how fast you're decelerating so if you well you'll, you'll see it on landing I'm just gonna do a quick circuit here let me set the internal yaw damper goes on the altitude will just go up to 3000 Gus lock set to take off. Um, arm altitude select. Alright. Again, forgive me, it's been a long time since I've flown this aircraft. Oh, they added this little light here too. That's on the PTU switch. That's new. Alright, so I think we're ready to go. I'm just gonna go. Ah, okay. We're in reverse for some reason. Takeoff configuration warning, but I don't know why. Oh, I think that's the other feather. Oh, it must be the trim. I think we can rotate now because I didn't set any speed, so I have no idea. Horrible takeoff, but as I said, I was unprepared for this video. Yeah, and I didn't set any flaps for takeoff either, so that could be the reason why the aircraft was uh, screaming at me. So let me see if I can get this trim control, um, this touch control steering to work. I engage the autopilot. No, that doesn't work. Mm -mm, that doesn't work either. So I'll have to uh, read up what that's about, but. Um, yeah. Need 
touch controls thing because it sounds like it could be useful although it's probably something I hardly would use now uh, before in the pilot version of the Q400 the um, that aircraft in terms of you know, what category approaches it could do that aircraft could only do category 2 which means you could only have uh, you could only land if you could you could go down as low as a hundred feet uh, AGL if you don't see the runway by then then you'd have to go around what this AGS does is it gives us the ability to be CAT 3A certified or it's one of the crucial equipments that allows this aircraft to be CAT 3A certified and what that means that doesn't mean that we can auto land but what it does mean is that we can the scenery is having some difficulties but what that does mean is that we can um, we can go down to an even lower decision height instead of 100 for cat 2 cat 3a we can go all the way down to 50 feet that said that requires us to manually uh, fly the aircraft using the HES so the autopilot probably could take us down to maybe 500 feet if I trust it that much it isn't exactly the most precise uh, autopilot so it's better you fly it by hand but um, in IMC I probably wouldn't go lower than a thousand feet in with the autopilot because then you want to get the aircraft stabilized uh, in manual control so you can see some returns here on the weather radar and the uh, HGS has the uh, CAT 3 auto arm mode it should automatically arm into CAT 3 mode um, once we're on a certain point along the approach so for that to happen again we do the same thing we set the runway length and airport elevation here at the glide slope angle the uh, ILS frequency on both nav 1 and 2 radios and uh, the course on both sides the nav source 1 is the left nav source is set to nav source 1 the right nav source is set to nav source 2 And since I didn't do any weight and balance, I have no idea what my approach speed is going to be like, so I'm gonna have to just figure that out somehow. This isn't supposed to be an uh, you know an accurate thing, but it's just to show you just the basics of um, what the pro version includes. So I think we can start to turn in. Towards the localizer. I think you probably turned in a bit too early, so I want to give myself a little bit more room.
2500. Alright, we can arm approach. So we've got localizer and glide slope armed here. I'm going to slow down to 180 knots. You can see here the bird, I believe, or the flight path vector. You, um, you can see localizer and glide slope you are capturing. Flashing, which means that we've captured. But you can see the bird here goes dashed, which means that it has gone off the uh, scale of the of the, the HUD, out of the view of the HUD. Go flaps five. Not gonna forget my flaps this time. Yes, you can just go gear down, get the aircraft stabilized as early as possible. With all the fun, we are CAT 3A uh, certified now, so set the decision height to 50 feet. So I should probably bug my speed. I'm just gonna set a bug here at about 134. make it 132. So you can see all the speed bugs uh, show up on the HUD also. And this is why you really should fly the... well we have a 22 knot crosswind anyway so... So I'm going to disengage the autopilot. And even though the bird is off scale, I can still fly it because it's still showing me um, where I need to be. And the HUD should switch into CAT 3 mode here soon. You can see the three degree glide slope line right here. That's we put that on the runway threshold, and once the flight path vector lines up with that, we're on the the correct. We're getting high on the glide slope here, though. I'm distracting myself by talking. Once you put the bird on that, once you put that three degree line on the runway threshold, and you put the flight path vector on that, then. Should be good. Okay, we switched the pitch Minimums. hold. I think we uh, we didn't Minimums. meet the criteria for the um, for the approach. Let's Minimums. let's go around. I think we were outside of the uh, criteria for the HUD to uh, arm in CAT 3, so we have to try that again. And you know, this aircraft is such a handful, it really becomes 
the multi crew thing really becomes useful because it's such a hands on uh, aircraft. Let me just give myself some more room from the runway. Let me get the autopilot on. Alright, I'm going to pause the video here and get the aircraft set up back on the approach and uh, hopefully then the the Cat 3 mode should work and you'll also see the rollout mode once we land. Alright, uh, we're back. We're just turning uh, towards the localizer now. Um, I checked the manual and there are a couple things I didn't set. I didn't set, um, I think you have to have the approach speed and the go around speed set. Well, I didn't have that set before, so I set it now. And, um, yeah, so everything else is okay. Let's arm the nav. Arm the localizer. Well, let's, let's arm the approach. And um, the elevation, the touchdown zone elevation and the runway length is already set. The glide slope angle is already set. Um, the uh, nav stuff is already set. 057, 057, nav 2, nav 1. And what I'm going to do now, once you capture the localizer, I'm going to set the heading to the uh, approach course also. And yes, as you may have noticed, I forgot to click the go around button when I did that go around, but as I said, I'm unprepared for this video. This is unrehearsed and everything, so. And it has been a while since I've flown this aircraft. There's a localizer, we set the heading now to 057. And there we are. A3 armed. And RO means rollout armed. And you see the HUD changed the altitude tape disappeared, the speed tape disappeared. And you get this, uh, this cross here which indicates the, um, the glide path and lateral guidance. So you're supposed to put the flat path vector inside of that circle. You have your barometric altitude here, your radio, radio altitude. I'm going to start getting some flaps in. Let's get the gear down, try to get the aircraft. The sooner we get it stabilized, the better. And this vertical bar you're seeing here is the speed trend vector shows you how fast or how slow you're accelerating.
Or no, actually that shows you how far off you're from your uproad speed, so I have the speed set wrong. Let me just switch them around real quick here. Yeah, so that shows you just how far off you are from your um, from your speed. So it's above your fast, you're above your um, uproad speed if it's below your your slow. So a thousand, we disengage the autopilots. And we fly the flight director. And there you can see the runway outline just show up. Plus hundred. One hundred. Minimums. Minimums. And there's a flare command that will cross Minimums. in the circle Minimums. that you keep the flat path yeah. vector on that. And there's rollout mode. And there you here you can see the runway length remaining. And this arrow here as you press the brakes it comes down so it shows how quickly you're decelerating. So yeah, that's it. Um, so yeah, guys, that's it. Um, that's uh, just what I wanted to show you. I know it's a crappy video. I know my flying is is crappy, but as I said, it's been a while since I've flown this aircraft. I just my flying is beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to show you uh, some of the new features that they include in the that is included in the pro version. Um, yep. So hope you enjoyed. Uh, see you in the next one.